Hi everyone, it's Brenda. I came on today to do a quick share with you guys. And I want to show you what I've been up to. Alright, for this you're going to need some watercolor paper. Um, 9 by 12 sheets are what I'm using. And one piece of double-sided scrapbook paper. And at 12 by 12, I took this here, which is... Graphic 45's The Curtain Call Collection, it's the cinema, and I have folded it in half, and I cut this down at 9 inches. So all that you're losing is this much. If you don't want to lose it, you can just score at 9 inches and fold it inside, okay? Um, personally, I didn't want the bulk from that, so... You'll need that. I did six pieces of the watercolor paper and folded it on the 12 inch side so it comes down to a 6 inch. It took six pages. And you're going to need a cutting mat, your X Acto, or you'll see. You might want, you could use a guillotine trimmer if you rather. A tack, um, which we all have those push pins, I'm sure. A ruler, a good metal straight edge and um, some binder clips, two staples. I made this book, which is out of the Graphic 45 paper too. This is Curtain Call as well, and this is the All That Jazz paper. And what it is, is a watercolor sketchbook. So you're making it personalized, making it tiny. And I'm gonna show you how to do it without killing your stapler. <laughs> um, not many people want to go out and purchase a long arm stapler because you really don't use it that often unless you're making a whole lot of books. But I don't use it that often. So what I did is I took six color, uh, six pages of watercolor paper and put them together in the signature. And I'm going to put binder clips just to keep them in place and keep them... Um, all together so this way they stay flat in a book and they're all pushed up against this corner. See how they're all in the 90 degree bend? Okay so you want to put the four on. That This is like detrimental because <laughs> the paper will shift. Okay sorry this is really hard to do this behind the camera. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put the cover on this too but I wanted you to see how they go on so I'm going to do that off camera. Um, but this is so you can make a, you know, a sketchbook um, to keep you on the go and you can kind of do it all in one step without having to make your signatures and then put it on and then you know make your next signature, sew it in or even when um, you use a stapler sometimes they don't align very well, but see how the cover is right in the corner? That's how you want to make sure that that's pushed in here. And the same with here, you want to make sure that the top and bottom line, the edges are going to stick out because of the bulk of the paper. That is normal. Um, anyone that tells you that it's like perfectly even each time when you do the, uh, even if you do the folds perfectly, no. See, when you close it, you're always going to have this, but that's what the straight edge and the exacto is for. We're going to trim this off and make it all even later. Okay. Now comes the fun part. This is where we normally struggle and, you know, flip open your um, stapler and kill it by jamming it and wasting staples and using so many. I just use regular standard... Uh, swing line staples. So they're the SF1s, I believe that's what they're called. But they're just normal. See? Super tiny. Um, I wouldn't go any for higher than six pages. I know some people can do ten, but um, this is a thicker weight paper and that's pretty much all this staple can handle. So unless you want to buy bigger ones. Um, and I'm just going to eyeball it. It doesn't really matter to me if it's perfect. I mean, you could measure this in, so they're the exact same, like two to two and a quarter inches from each end. 
but that doesn't really matter to me because this is going to hold up anyway. And I'm just going to mark on the spine the distance of the staples. Like I said, just eyeballing. And you really only need two. You don't need three. I mean, if you feel more comfortable, well, you know, have at it. Then what you're going to do is take your safety pin, which, well, your tack, which actually has a handle on it for you. And you're going to just push it through all the layers. And it comes out the other side. There you go. And sometimes you have to do this from both sides. Um, so I'm going to do one first and then put this in and show you. Now, I'm going to put the staple from the back because um, it's just that easier for me. So I'm going to find the holes and try to set the staple in. Sometimes they go in super easy and sometimes they'll give you a little fight if one end goes in before the other. See, that one went in really good and that side's giving me a little fight. There we go. And then you'll lay this flat and you can feel that they're um, sticking through. You don't want to poke yourself. And this is where I use my metal ruler. I flip it over so the cork slides out. And I'm going to just push in to fold that in. And then I'm going to spin this around because it's easier to get at that way. And do the same thing on this side. And there is one staple in. So <clears throat> now I'll do the other side here and push with the tack through. Okay, and get the other staple here. I think the hardest part of this for me was separating these staples. When you don't want them to separate, they separate and they fall all over the place. And then when you do, they're like really stuck together. This would probably be easier holding it together with a tweezer to show you guys, but then I know I definitely wouldn't be able to get it in there. <laughs> okay. There you go. And we'll push this one down here. And fold this one in. And now we can take our binder clips off and fold our book in half. And now you can see the tops and the bottom line up perfectly, both sides, because you have that binder clip. The only thing that's an issue is this, but this is normal. See how it comes to a point? That's only because the signatures take up that much room and slide forward. So now we'll just trim this down and I just line it up with the outside of the paper because your edges are perfectly even so will your top and your bottom cover be so just make sure you line that up I'm sorry I'm doing this around the tripod so it's kind of hard to line this up without getting my head in the way okay I think that's good And you do not have to press hard. Um, a whole bunch of little cuts are better than a whole bunch of hard cuts because that's when you start cutting crooked is when you push too hard. You just want to run alongside of the middle ruler and shave a little off at a time. You can ask me how I know that rushing through is a bad thing. <laughs> This is why metal rulers are so much better because I did it with a plastic ruler and I cut right through the ruler and it's a good thing I had some good reflexes at the time because I would have cut my finger. Like I say, just keep making the small cuts. is a little crooked just from the angle I'm standing at. 
Okay. And there you see. Flush. And you have your brand new watercolor sketchbook. Personalized to your favorite papers. And you could throw these in your bag or just keep them on your art station, whatnot, and use them whenever you want. So you can have them for each different subject, maybe. But there you go. I hope you like that. I thought this was super fun to do, and I just wanted to share it with y'all. Thanks for stopping by and sharing a little time here, uh, a time with me today, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.